After, what, another hour? Another hour of bumbling through the afterlife with very little to show for your efforts, you decide to pause the game again. You can only spend so long powering through the dead troll equivalent of an unpleasant high school reunion without making a trip to the load gaper, or fixing yourself a little snack from the hunger trunk. There's definitely someone else we should be checking in with right now. Someone we are all desperate for an update on. And that someone is... This guy! This is the guy who you are now being. The feisty male woman is still chasing you. Unbelievable. She hardly seems to care at all that something is causing reality to shatter around you. For a moment, you thought you and she might be able to reach an uneasy truce. To stand together, if only for a moment, and assess the ominous crack spreading through the void. Maybe even take some time to get to know each other a little and try to bury the hatchet. You are so tired of running. But no, she is as furious as ever. What did you even do? Just a couple of routine murders, which was two years ago already. The ring hath no fury, you swear. She is never going to stop. Her delivery is justice. And as you know all too well, nothing stops the mail. You need to find somewhere to hide and rest for a while. There. You got a Papa Matic Billy Who Hammer.
I saw it first. Huh? Give it to me. What, the ring? Yes, it's mine. Who are you? I'm your worst bad dream if you don't return my treasure. I found it, snuggled in the sand, being pretty and gold and by itself, and I want it back. So you found it here, like exactly where I just found it, but then instead of picking it up, you fell asleep? When you put it that way, I sound stupid, but yes. Sorry, buddy. As the age-old saying goes, you snooze, you lose. I never heard that age-old saying in my culture, so fuck your lingual heritage, and give me the ring! Why were you even asleep? I was tired, duh. This is such a dumb place to fall asleep, dude. Treasure hunting is hard. She has me working like a bark fiend. Who? My mate, Sprit. That means girlfriend, you ignoramus. I know what it means. No offense, but you seem like kind of a lame troll. I don't think we ever talked before, did we? Who cares? Give me my treasure. No way. It's mine, bro. Shit. Okay, maybe we can work out some kind of deal. I don't know. This ring is pretty sweet. The price would have to be pretty steep. Wow, you are really putting me in an uncomfortable and challenging situation. Why do you want this desert ring so bad? Is it magic? I don't really feel magic wearing it. I mean, not any more than usual. I don't know if it's magic. That's not why I want it. Well, I'm not giving it to you unless you have a really good reason. It's for private sentimental purposes. I don't want to say. That's cool. Guess I will just enjoy this ring forever as my property. Okay, I'll tell you. You're an awful human, by the way. Yeah, right, dude. Would an awful guy be wearing such a sweet, priceless ring? I don't think so. Oh my god, that's such bad logic that you're knowingly using to be a worse enemy. Yeah, you sure did explain that, I guess. I want the ring because... This requires some laborious explanation. It pertains to human customs, which I have taken time to study as an eternal ghost. The treasure is needed to complete a sort of ritualized pact having to do with human mating, to cement in stone the romantic matrimonies. Oh, you want to use it to propose to your girlfriend? Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> that is not really what I was expecting to hear. I thought you were just being a greedy, treasure-grubbing douche. You mean like you? Yes, but that's a pretty good reason. I guess I can let you have it if it is going to result in a happy marriage. Okay, then hurry and give it to me! Who is the lucky lady anyway? Oh no, hurry up, there's no time! Tom Rose! She's coming! Who? Give it to me, she can't see it yet, it has to be a surprise! Also, I don't want her to know I got it from a loser like you! Hey. Tom Rose! Oh my god. Tom... Oh! Hi, John! Tom Rose, I didn't know you were hanging out with John! You should have come told me. But I just woke up from the sand pile and found him here. I had literally no time to go tell you because of an argument. What? What were you arguing about? Uh... Wait, what do you mean woke up? Why were you asleep? Uh... Damn it, Tavros, you can't be slacking off like that. I told you we aren't fucking around anymore. This is serious business. Hey... Excuse me, but are you Riska? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I really should have introduced myself. I guess I forgot I've technically never met this version of you. Uh, that's all right. Nice to meet you. Wait, are you a ghost too? Yep. So, you're dead? Yes, John. That's what being a ghost means. Okay, I'm still confused though. Sorry if I sound dumb, but dream bubbles are still kind of baffling to me. You're, uh, really dead? As in, the real you. I mean, dang, what the hell am I even trying to ask you? No, I get what you're asking. Yes, the real me. The actual, legit, fully authentic Alpha Timeline Briska. Dead. Gone. Fucking toast! Oh, so, when I meet up with everyone on your troll meteor in a year, that means... You'll be... A corpse! That's assuming my body was sufficiently preserved during the trip. Which, now that I think about it, I guess it was? It must have been, because otherwise that unspeakable prototyping atrocity couldn't have happened. 
That piece of shit clown. I still have no idea what the deal with that was. He's completely lost his mind. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Honestly, I'm surprised you hadn't already heard I was dead one way or another. It's kind of old news. Then again, these things are all relative, so who knows? <laughs> are you okay? You seem sad. Well, yeah. It's always sad to hear a friend died, even if you find out about it from their ghost. I guess so. Also, I had kind of a thought that when we all arrived at the new session that... we were going to, like, hang out? Or something. Oh yeah, that's right, we were! But then I got stabbed through the back, which, to be fair, was for the good of the party so the meteor could make the trip in the first place and keep this whole crazy sequence of events intact. Not gonna lie, I made some mistakes. Wow, what even happened out there? Just some pointless deadly teen drama, mostly brought on by ourselves all acting like juvenile idiots. Like I said, old news. Very old for me. I've been here a pretty long time now. A lot has happened since I died. John, did you know the little rendezvous-y plan sort of already happened? I mean, in a way. What? It did? Yes, with your ghost. Huh? I mean, the ghost of one of your alternate selves who died along the way doing some stupid thing. Actually, he and I dated for a while. Whoa, hold on. What's this about dating who? Grown. Here we go. Why didn't you tell me about that? Tavros, I have led a rich and complicated life in death. I can hardly be expected to tell you about every little thing that I've been through. Besides, you should have already known this about me. Why? Because we shared a sprite body once. We briefly had access to all each other's memories and feelings. So if you didn't take the chance to dig that out of my memory, you only have yourself to blame. No, but that hardly lasted any time at all. And there were a lot of overwhelming experiences all happening at once. How could I try to remember all your memories before we exploded? Well, all I can say is I managed. I took the opportunity to remember pretty much all your memories. I was in and out like a bandit, and now all your life experiences are mine. That's not fair, because you're smarter than me and more cunning. Them's the breaks. Wait, I'm with Tavros here, and I think we should back this up a bit. So, my alternate reality ghost dated you? Yes. That, but, but... What? Vriska... This is a very bizarre and unsettling fact to me. Why? Because... Man, I don't know, it just is. You say we dated for a while, but like... I don't even get to remember doing that? I think that's mostly what's weird about it. Hey, we apparently don't get to remember the results of a lot of choices we didn't actually make. Again, see the breaks. Well... Can you at least tell me what happened there? Like... How did that go? It was fine. For a while. It didn't really work out. Oh. We crossed paths every now and then after that. Things stayed pretty friendly between us. Until he died. What? What do you mean he died? He was murdered. You mean... his ghost died? Yes. As in, he just doesn't exist at all anymore. Like, dead dead. Yes, dead dead. For good. I don't... How does that even... Who killed him? Was it Jack? Jack? Are you kidding? No, John. Jack is barely in the picture as a threat anymore. He's just more old news. He is not old news, though. He's still as strong and menacing as ever. I just had an awesome battle with him in this very dream bubble. You did? Yeah, I found him skulking around a memory of my dead dad. And I got pissed off, so I really let him have it. Oh, I even used the cool hammer you helped me make. Remember that? Oh, yeah! Those were good times when I helped you be great. Yes. The last time I faced him was kind of embarrassing. I let him get the drop on me, and he just stabbed me right away. But this time, I think I held my own pretty well. I even got him one good hit against him. I gave him a solid bop on the head, and the dice roll made him wear a silly hat. That's awesome! One time, in an alternate reality, I came pretty close to killing him, apparently. Oh, really? You bet. 
Too bad that wasn't a timeline that didn't really count. But it's always reassuring to know you can put up a good fight against a strong adversary if you ever needed to. Now I guess you know you can too. I guess so. What happened after you bonked him on the head? I bet he was mad. Yeah, he sure was. And our fight was interrupted by, like, another taller white jack dressed in rags. A white jack? Well, no, it wasn't actually a jack. It was someone different altogether, who just looked like him, with wings and a sword and everything. I think the white jack was probably a girl? I'm not sure, but that was my hunch. I didn't talk to her or anything. She looked really angry. Anyway, he seemed scared of her, so he flew away, and she chased him. Do you know who she was? No fucking clue. Whatever Jack's doing out here in Dream Bubble Land, he seems to have his hands full with her on his tail. But as you can see, he is far from out of the picture. Okay, that may be, but it sure wasn't Jack who killed a whole shitload of ghosts out here, including one of yours. I really doubt Jack can even kill ghosts. In fact, I don't think anyone can except for this guy. What guy? Lord English. Who? Wow, John. Really? Wow. Time to get a clue. Hasn't it ever occurred to you to wonder who the ultimate bad guy of this adventure was going to be? Ultimate bad guy? You mean like the last boss? Man, even that way of putting it is a little too pedestrian. I mean, I already beat a last boss. The Black King was the officially sanctioned last boss of our session, and I killed him. This is different. There's always someone stronger waiting to be revealed. Jack showed up shortly after that, and he was much stronger. Eventually, the curtains get pulled back and you find out who was behind every terrible thing that happened all along. Someone who is invariably stronger than all other adversaries by a wide margin. The supreme villain. To be honest, I was always kind of waiting for that guy to show up, whoever he was. For the other shoe to drop, you know? There's always a big bad behind everything. A true gamer sees stuff like this coming a mile away. Okay, if you say so. I always kind of thought Jack was evil and strong enough to be our main antagonist. But if you say there is someone even stronger and more evil, then... Wow. Yes, I'll admit, I was fooled by Jack briefly. For a little while, I thought he was the supreme menace, and I would have to face him in a final showdown. But it turned out that was just a bit of standard misdirection. He was just another step up in a typical pattern of escalation involving increasingly insurmountable threats, which legendary heroes like us have to overcome to achieve total victory over everything. Also, let's face it, I don't think Jack is all that evil so much as he's just a murderous asshole. Trust me, I know the type. But English? That guy is as evil as they come. He's the real deal. Okay, can I just say something? I still don't know why you're so sure he's the final villain, because you yourself said there's always someone stronger, right? So I'm perceiving a contradiction about your facts. Tavros, come on! We've already talked about this ad nauseum. He's the big bad! It's so obvious! I mean, maybe there's someone stronger out there in Paradox Space, who knows? But whoever that is has nothing to fucking do with this massive extended multiverse-spanning campaign! English was the guy who stacked the whole deck against us from the start, rigging shit to go haywire, wiping out our race, blowing up universes, exterminating ghosts, slaughtering dark gods, and shattering reality itself! Pretty sure we reached the top floor, buddy. Okay, but all I'm saying is, what if there's someone even worse than that due to speculation? Unbelievable. John, just ignore him. He tends to be contrary just for the sake of being contrary. It's just what he does these days. He seems to think it's how you show confidence and assertiveness. The key to high self-esteem is apparently just saying nuh-uh all the time. No, that's not true. See? This was apparently the big lesson he learned from sharing a brain with me for a few minutes. In order to feel good about yourself, just be a constant pain in the ass. No, that's not what I learned. <laughs> I see what you mean. No, no, no. Okay, I realize all I'm saying is no, which is just helping make you look as right as possible about making fun of me, but I learned in your brain that you aren't always right about everything. You were wrong about lots of things. You were wrong about Rufio. Rufio is real all along. All right, granted, there did, in fact, exist a person by that name. You aren't spelling it right, though. 
How do you know how I'm spelling it when I'm just talking instead of using letters? Because that's how you spelled it when we used to chat online, dumbass. You weren't using enough letters. So? And in any case, he doesn't actually represent your self-esteem. He's just some dude. But he makes me feel better about myself when I think of him. So the reality is effectively equivalent to my fraudulent childhood superstition. Lol. Whatever floats your boat. You both seem a bit testy with each other. It's kind of funny. Actually, it's a little hard to believe you and he are... What? Er... Never mind, actually. Huh? I take it you were pretty good friends back on your planet? You could say that. There's a pretty loaded history between us. It's probably best not to get into it. None of that matters anymore anyway. It was so long ago, you know how it is. Um, sure? Issues between people seem like such a big deal when they're happening, but then you die and time just goes on and on and on some more. If enough time passes, shit that used to be a big deal kind of stops mattering. Okay, full disclosure, I used to do a lot of terrible things to Tavros. Once, I launched him off a cliff and paralyzed him, and if that wasn't bad enough, I spent sweeps mocking him for the disability I caused. <laughs> oh yeah, then I killed him. Oh, right. I remember you said you killed someone that you cared about. I guess this is him? Mm-hmm. But like I said, that's such old news now, it might as well not have even happened. Tavros doesn't give a shit about that stuff anymore. Hey, wait, maybe you shouldn't speak for me? I still kind of think that stuff was all pretty mean, even though it was forever ago. It's just, I have chosen to be the bigger man and not hold it against liking you. <laughs> John, can you believe this guy? This is the kind of shit I have to deal with all the time. Oh god, no, time out. I'm flagging this Riska as terrible behavior. Tavros, the bigger man, is only actually the bigger man if he doesn't refer to himself as the bigger man. That's kind of the point. Unless the intent is to produce some form of socially awkward comic relief, which let's face it is what you're all about. But that's what I like about you. Yes. Hmm, I feel like maybe we got sidetracked there. Maybe you should tell me more about this English guy. Frankly, it seems like I'm usually one of the last people to learn about stuff like this, and it's starting to make me feel like a bit of a tool. He's just some huge, overpowered green freak. A time-traveling monster supposedly invincible. Who he is, what he is, where he came from, none of that really matters. What matters is how we're going to defeat him. That's what Tavros and I have been working on here for some time now. Working on what? Treasure hunting. Oh yeah? What treasure? Yes, okay, I should explain. There's sort of a plan in motion to beat English. It's a three-pronged approach. A number of people out here in the furthest ring are working on different prongs of the strategy independently. The first is a quest to find the lost ghost of some alien girl. She's said to be one of the keys to defeating him in some way. Other people are allegedly out there working on that right now. If you ask me, it sounds like a really boring approach to defeating him. Who knows if it's even true? Give it to the me. second is Stop a quest it. to raise Give an army of ghosts yourself. to challenge him directly in some kind of huge battle royale, I guess. From what I understand, some Yahoo out there is busy rounding people up. I really have no idea how that's going. I usually just hear stuff through the grapevine. That approach doesn't really interest me either. Gonna file it under boring as well. Seems a little heavy-handed, not to mention too slow. Give me the, the third ring. prong no. is what Tavros and yes, I are busy with. Yes. The Dude, aforementioned you treasure hunt. You said you'd give it to the legend me. I changed my there's mind. there's some mystical ancient treasure hidden somewhere out here in the furthest ring. I'm assuming it's some kind of weapon. It's said that if you use it, or like activate it in some way, he can be defeated forever. The nature of the treasure is pretty vague, actually. But the first rule of treasure hunting, which I'm admittedly just making up now, is that it doesn't fucking matter what the treasure is. These we had a deal! Quit it! Why are you such a liar? Legend, which Shut I've up! I'm keeping it! This is not cool! Legendary You're preventing joyful humans back that you wanted from happening! Yeah, right. She would even say I yes. I don't even think she's myself. really your girlfriend. 
I think you made that up. It doesn't hurt that everywhere we go, places are composed of the collective memories of many different adventurers. We've explored ancient crypts, networks of burial mounds, dusty old tombs, giant pyramids, you name it. Hints about the endgame are hidden all over the place. Really, everyone's pretty lucky I died so I could do all the dirty work on this. Let's get real, nobody's better prepared to take on the treasure hunting duties than I am. I didn't have the that treasure. I have it it's precious way. to me, just like my this beautiful girlfriend. Like you are so full of shit. Why bother we would love together, asshole. There's no way you're getting this ring. Magic Fuck alien. you! When you can go straight I'm going to wish as super weapon. hard as I can Hell, that I wake up with this ring. It's probably magic, so I bet it makes my wish come true. I doubt that from happening. If I wish hard enough, that will make it slightly less impossible. Oh, you bastard, you are gut. I think someday I will use it to propose to my girlfriend. What do you think about that, wise guy? No! Give me! This is pathetic. Stop grabbing at me. We're missing what she's saying. She's going to think we're idiots. Won't you stop? Are you fuckers even listening to me? God damn it! Yes. No, you're not. You're squabbling with Tavros in his loud, shitty whispering about some bullshit. Come on, guys. Am I really being that boring? I'm really starting to understand how my ancestor must have felt sometimes. Nobody ever respects an important explanation. I've already heard your explanations, though. Why are you still whispering, jackass? Oh, sorry. <sighs> Both of you just keep your damn hands to yourselves, shut up, and let me finish my story. Tavros, bring me the treasure maps! Yes, right away. Yes, that's it. Dump them all over the floor about ten feet away from me, just like that. The sloppier the pile and the further away from me, the better. Great job, Tavros. Thank you. John, come take a look at this. Those are all treasure maps? Sort of. Probably not like any maps you've seen. Check it out. This ought to help you understand how frustrating this treasure hunt really is. John, tell me what you see here. Um, where? Right here. What is this? This thing I'm holding? A black piece of paper? No, John. This is bullshit, is what it is. Oh. Yes. Clearly. This is what a map looks like in the furthest ring. This is what all maps look like out here. Turns out, plotting the relative geographical features of an infinite black expanse of pure void is every bit as moronic as it sounds. But that didn't stop some ancient eldritch chucklefuck from doing exactly that. For the longest time, this is all we've had to go on when it came to deciphering the clues and figuring out the coordinates of the legendary treasure. Do you have any idea how hard it is to pin down the physical location of something out here? Never mind the fact that physical location in the furthest ring is already a malleable concept. Just imagine what it's like giving someone directions. What do you tell them? Proceed in a straight line shaped like a perpetually shifting torus knot until you feel a sense of despair transcending all mortal comprehension, then hang a right at the next octopus? There's nothing static out here! No landmarks, no points of reference, nothing! If you want to make any headway in this great big field of fuck-all, someone has got to start wrecking some shit. Would that someone be you? <laughs> I wish I had that kind of firepower, but no. You wouldn't believe my luck. You see, recently, someone's been doing that dirty work for us. Wanna know what the kicker is? The guy who's been fucking shit up is the big bad himself! Every time he destroys another dream bubble, he does a little more damage to the furthest ring, inexplicably shattering the essence of all-encompassing nothingness. As the cracks spread across the void, new points of reference show up on our maps. Then we look at the angles and intersections and all the shapes formed by the cracks, and compare them to our notes from the various riddles and clues we've discovered about the path to the treasure. It's actually a little like how in old times on Alternia, pirates used to navigate by shapes the stars made. Constellations used to have a lot of significance in our culture, not just guiding explorers on their journeys to physical destinations, but guiding them on the choices they made in life pertaining to fate and all that. Not that humans would really understand anything like that. 
I actually find the situation to be pretty funny. This guy's ego must be astronomical. Classic case of unchecked hubris paving the way for his own downfall. I didn't even need to build a web to trap him. He just went ahead and started building his own. Talk about a lucky break. That is pretty neat. So does that mean you know where the treasure is now? No, because the map isn't complete yet. Needs more cracks so we can plot the rest of the course. All we're able to do now is head in the right general direction. So, ironically, in order to prevent reality from being destroyed, we need to wait for it to be damaged further. In fact, we're better off encouraging it. Encouraging it? What, you mean like making him mad so he breaks more, uh, nothingness? Yes, but it has to be strategic. We have to somehow lead him in the direction of the places we want him to damage. Specifically, the places where the route dead ends. Wherever we need new points of reference to keep going. So that means you have to piss him off, I guess. Not really. He's already pissed off. I think he's just permanently that way. It's more about getting his attention, using the right bait, like going fishing. But to do that, you gotta know what he really wants. Like what motivates him. I mean, besides indiscriminately killing dead children and huge tentacle monsters. I am guessing you have an idea what that might be? Sure. The rumor is he's trying to find that dead alien girl I mentioned and kill her ghost for good. If he catches on to the fact that some of us are looking for her too and thinks we're hot on her trail, he'll probably start following us around and wreaking havoc wherever we go. We just have to make sure we're in the right place when he tries to kill us. Oh, also try not to actually die again while we're at it. <laughs> so, the bait is really you. Sort of. It's actually more the bogus idea that will lead him to the cherub because we're looking for her too, which we're obviously not. There's some manipulation involved. Okay. How do you know he'll go for it? I mean, how will he actually know you're looking for her? That's a pretty good question. Have to admit, I don't have everything quite figured out yet. Yeah... Shh! I'm still talking! But that's never not being the case. Always. Nice sentence, genius. Anyway, like I was saying, I'm hoping my exploits can spread throughout the ring by word of mouth. Tales of my legend, you know? Then once he catches on, he'll come looking for us and then presumably go apeshit with his rainbow laser breath. Metaphysical cataclysm ensues. That sounds... optimistic? Yeah, exactly. See, this to me maybe speaks to the danger of having self-esteem that is unreasonably high. <laughs> Oh, shut up! I said it's a work in progress! We might need to make a bigger spectacle of ourselves somehow, get more people involved, I don't know. It does seem like he's more drawn toward greater concentrations of ghosts. There's still plenty of time to figure it out. That's one thing about being dead, there's always more time. Plus, needless to say, Lady Luck will always be on our side. Well, cool. That was actually a very interesting story, Vriska. You're a pretty good storyteller. You think so? Oh yes, I think so too. She's gotten much better at stories as a recreational long-term death hobby. Oh yeah? Sure, we both looked at lessons from our ancestors to improve our souls. Her ancestral awakening has to do with understanding her destiny, to tell long stories to people and make them listen to all the words irregardless of their interest by any means necessary. The art of saying optimal tales, by my understanding, is to charge through all conceivable details and excessive minutia until they are exhausted completely much like it is a spiritual practice, and extraneous information is treated like the religious words you say over and over again until brain peace happens. That's... one way of looking at it. I don't know about excessive minutia or brain peace, but I was hanging on every word. Aw, you guys, you're making me blush. I wish I could hang out with you longer and maybe even help you with your treasure hunt. But I just know I'm gonna be waking up soon. Darn. Who even knows how long it will be before we meet again in another bubble? Yeah, well, them's the brakes. <laughs> Soon it will be mine! Don't mind him, John. He's just being weird and tooly again. It was nice to see you and catch up like this. If we don't meet in another dream soon, don't worry. I have a feeling we'll be crossing paths again before this is all over.